Hey everybody, it's your girl Jada Reese here, aka Diamond, and I just wanted to come and introduce today's vlog. So I definitely forgot to do that. That's the only thing I forgot. Everything else, reading did occur, okay? So anyway, today's going to be a reading vlog. We're going to be talking about three books in the vlog. I don't want to really talk about what it is right now because I want you to watch it, but I just want to introduce the vlog, tell you guys thank you so much for 513 subscribers. Yay! Also, don't forget to hit that like button, hit the share, and my favorite part, comment. Let's talk about books. Let's start talking more about books. Even if it's not anything about the books in my video, let's talk about the books you're reading. I always want to know. And also, if you're new here, please subscribe to my channel. And that's about it. So yeah, I just wanted to introduce the vlog, say hey, and I hope you guys enjoy. And I'll see you guys in the next upload. All right? all right it is kind of dark in here there we go that's better that's better that's better i just wanted to come and show my outfit um yeah i'm showing my little outfit for the day um, my mirror usually is not over here. You know, you would be able to get like the full gist, but I usually have my mirror on the other side, but the Christmas tree is over there. So anyway, I have on a little Zara number, little Zara t-shirt. It's a short sleeve turtleneck. This is a fox sweater sweater. These are some Citizens of Humanities jeans. And then we have the star of the show. We have my favorite boots. You will see these pretty much all of the, all the time. Anyways, we are headed to read some of the either or because I still want to finish this book before the new year. Today is um, December 29th. Today is my little sister Kia's birthday. Happy birthday Kia, she lives in Atlanta. So anyway, um, my daughter is having a sleepover. So I'm about to get ready and take her to that. And then I'm gonna find a cute little cafe to read at. Um, I have an idea of one, but I don't like the chairs. But we shall see, and I will see you guys there um, shortly. Okay, so just dropped the kiddo off. So now we're about to go, okay. I don't know what coffee shop I want to go to. I don't know which one I want to go to just yet, but I do know that I want to go to this Friends of the Germantown Library bookstore. Um, it is another secondhand bookshop that I've actually never been to. I always go to my favorite one, which is at the Benjamin L. Hooks Library. But I'm, they just out, they just ain't got it. They don't have what I need. I've already placed a little order on Amazon. So I got a couple of books coming in on Amazon. I'll show you what I got when they come in the mail. Um, they're gonna come separately though. Don't know why. Um, girl, I feel so weird. I have not been outside of the house. Girl, I haven't been outside of the house in so long. Okay, I stopped at Starbucks because remember I told y'all, I got those damn Starbucks gift cards. So the money has already been spent. I didn't buy the gift cards. They were given to me. So I just, you, I honestly just used a lot up to buy autumn and her friends some stuff so now i got my little coffee going and listen don't judge me and it's good too it's a caramel macchiato with an extra shot of espresso made with almond milk yummy oh i don't know what i really want i when i see a book continuously reoccurring on other people's um top books of 2000 whatever the case may be top books i get the book and so one book i've been already had on my radar is the rachel incident and it's by a irish is she ireland from ireland um i think she's an irish author don't quote me but i read an irish book last year called milkman by anna burns and i that was one of my top reads of 2022. I love that book so much. I still think about Middle Sister. To this day, I'm thinking about Middle Sister. So, to know that another 
um, there's another potential Irish book out there that's like for me, you know? Oh, am I almost there? I gotta try, I gotta try it out. So I actually, I already ordered that book. I know I said I wasn't gonna say. I talk so much. I can't see because I have you guys on my GPS, but it's a perfect, it's just perfect. So anyway, I just want to pop in and tell you guys where we were headed. That's where we're going. I don't have any updates because I haven't started back reading the novel just yet, but I just want to tell you guys where we're going. So when you see me on the next screen, you'll see that we're at the Friends of Germantown Library bookstore. So yeah. Oh, my Antonia. It's a pretty one. The pink. Talented series, but this is gonna fall over. I wonder why they were here yesterday. I've never heard of this one. You know, I go to the one at the Benjamin L. Hooks. Oh. And I saw this one. I was like, well, I have to try it out today. Oh, good. I'm yeah. glad you're here. This is my first time. That's my favorite they one. Have they have a really nice mm -hmm. store, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh, yeah. I've read so many books from there, and I've made friends, and they saved me oh. stuff. But I was like, let hey, me we come. Y'all do. <laughs> and I live closer to this Worst one, too. Nice yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. And these, the ones that were You did? When we were shopping, I was downstairs sorting. Okay. Sorting the yeah. Out. Yeah. That gets so much stuff. And we don't but... like them sort here. No? <laughs> he just sits and chills out. We'll let him sit down every now and then. Yeah, because he, he's uh, he'd probably here. mess it up. That's why they don't do it. Yeah. Touch that stuff. Well, you'd have. Their sorting facility is a lot different than ours. Is it? Is it I messy? Mean, they've got the whole basement. It's okay. Pretty large. It's, it's, it's pretty large. Yeah. They talk, I hear the side conversations about where the donations come from and how some of the stuff is just like insane. Like as far as like how old it is and maybe how valuable some of the books yeah. are and how they might, I think, sell some of them online. Yeah. Yeah. And it's at least one or two people sitting at a computer rack. going to, to yeah. look to see if it's valuable. Mm -hmm. They, should they have two or... people that so, I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, I'm loving it. Thank you guys. Y'all are so nice. I'm glad you tried us out. Yeah. We like your place too. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, I found some great books and made some new friends. Um, so, let's just go ahead. Let's just do it in the car. Let's just do it in the car. I'm so excited. I'm not going to. I'm not going to read the synopsis. I'll do that later. But I found this um, Franz Kafka um, beautiful edition. Isn't this nice? And it has the Metamorphosis, which I read the Metamorphosis. I read the Penal Colony, and I don't know what the other stories are. But I've read Franz. I had to read Franz when I was in college. So. I'm excited to have this because it has, and the judgment, I read the judgment, but it got all these other things in here that I've never read before. So it's a whole little Franz Kafka compilation. So that's exciting. And then we have David Sedaris, Dress Your Family in Corduroy and Denim. We have another David Sedaris, um, Me Talk Pretty One Day. I like the cover. So that's my little intro to David Sedaris. And I had picked up a mass market Toni Morrison Song of Solomon, but I also found this one in Looking, and I like this one. And so I plan to revisit uh, the Song of Solomon. I had to read this, and I remember an essay that I wrote on this novel when I was in college, but that was so long ago. That was over, I'm 31 now, so over 10 years ago. So I'm really interested in rereading it as a grown woman, even though I was grown then, but you know what I mean. Um, Mary Oliver, Blue Pastures. The Road by Cormac McCarthy. And Indian Horse by Richard Wagmees. I don't think I've introduced today. Today is Saturday, December 30th. And I actually just got from doing a live 
uh, reading. Um, and I decided to get out the house and come and get something to eat. I'm at City Silo, which is a vegan-based, plant-based restaurant. And I decided to order this buffalo tempura. Um, what else is in there? It's like, it's like buffalo cauliflower and what else? Buffalo cauliflower. I forgot what else is in there. I think it's um, and tofu. So yeah, and then I'm gonna sit here and read. I brought my two books, brought my iPad, and I brought um, Blue Pastures by Mary Oliver. So I sat on live and I read for an hour. So I'm just gonna read some more while I'm here. I actually thought I was gonna go to this new restaurant called um, the exposure is up a lot. I don't understand why. Put, move it right here, maybe. That's better. That's better. That's better. Hi guys, it's me, I'm back for another day. So, first of all, let me turn this this way. There is a lot that I need to be updating everybody on. So I've lost a whole freaking day of footage. Well, it's not a day, but it was definitely a pivotal part of um, what I have going on in this vlog. Cause at the start of the vlog, Basically, you guys are learning that I'm finishing up either or by Elif Batuma. But later on that day, please fasten driver seat belt. Later on that day, I was in the bed and I was reading Elif Batuma's either or, and it came to that part. And it's so 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 funny. I must have lost my exact space in the book, and I must have put the bookmark a few pages prior to because when I started back reading some more I remember exactly why I stopped reading this book at that time in the summer and I'm still not quite there yet to where I want to continue on so it's the part where spoiler here spoiler here spoiler here just letting you know you might want to skip through but it's the part where um slept Lana tells Celine that she's finally did it she's finally had sex and so just not to spoil anything but it goes into detail and then you start learning about like what um um what Celine is thinking and how she's gonna have all these extra questions because you know she has not had sex yet she's still a virgin so I just don't I, I'm not, I don't know but one thing that's um Elise Botsman does is she writes very well um, her nostalgia is very much on par and not to say that I've experienced terrible things as it relates to sex because not necessarily but there are memories that started to well up inside of me that I didn't want to just like com quite confront and that's the thing about me and my reading I definitely choose texts that make me think about what I've done in my past and kind of like bring forth um, just memories that I don't quite want to just talk about or think about in that moment so that's what that text was doing to me so I had to put it down and I right now I don't know um right now I don't know what when I'm gonna finish it I don't know so I'm just gonna leave that there so fast forward what I also was saying was I started reading Cassandra at the wedding by I think her name is Dorothy Naylor don't quote me let me get my phone and see I do think her name is Dorothy Naylor um, I don't know because I'm not looking at it every day because I'm reading it via ebook um, Cassandra at the, what Dorothy Baker not Naylor but Baker so 
I'm yeah I'm reading that currently and girl it is so good so let's go ahead and talk about it so Cassandra at the wedding is exactly what it says it's going to be about Cassandra who is going to her sister's wedding she's not only her sister but Cassandra is is a twin so you have Cassandra and you have Judith and their nicknames are Cass and Jude and it just details well it's written in two no four one two three, three monologues so you have cassandra talking for the first part of the book you have judith's part and it's called cassandra speaks and then you have judith speaks and then you have cassandra speaks again because cassandra's gonna have the last word and you can tell cassandra's gonna have the last word because of how the book starts off okay the book starts off with i told them I could be there or I told them basically like I told them I probably can make it a day early or such and such on the 21st like she's definitely like bossy a bossy bitch so here's the thing I think Cassandra at the wedding is a modern classic or a quote-unquote classic because it was written in the 60s it was published in 1963 and it is slightly LGBTQ IA plus definitely Cassandra is gay she is gay they're from California she goes to Berkeley she wants to be a writer um, and she's definitely spiraling so one of the main things that's going on right now is you can tell Cassandra is grappling with the idea of losing her identity as a twin sister. Um, she speaks, so it's written in first person, Cassandra, I, I, but she uses we uh, a whole lot. Um, she, she uses we a lot. And so with her, to me, with her using we like that, it basically sets the tone that they are this dynamic duo it's their life it's their everything they share everything they spend a lot of time everywhere with each other but this new guy she's so funny this book is so funny she refuses to call him by his name she's like dr this or mr who or jock or whatever his name is his name is jack <laughs> But she doesn't want to acknowledge him as a person who has swept in and, and, and taken her part of her identity away from her, which is her twin sister, Judith. So you have all these details of Dorothy writing about basically her unraveling. And then I think the plot is definitely going to turn into she's going to try to sabotage this wedding. It has not specifically stated. I have not gotten to any of those pivotal points in the novel but you just can tell leading up to it this girl is gonna try to sabotage his wedding because she's not about to have nobody coming in taking nothing away from her making changes you're not about to be coming and making changes that I have not signed up for I have not okay because you can tell Cassandra is the boss bitch okay so a lot of other things that are like coming into fruition in this novel is you're learning about their father who is a retired quote-unquote too early retired professor that speaks to something deeper there's a deeper meaning for that then you have their bossy controlling grandmother who Cassandra slips in and out of calling her grandmother granny and calling her by her last name also the grandmother is Jane their mom's mother and then you have their dad um, I forgot his name but their last names are Edwards I think and He's definitely borderline alcoholic. It's a lot of drinking in this novel. Um, Cassandra also is a drinker. She loves alcohol. She loves having a drink. Ain't nothing wrong with a little drinky drink. But when you are definitely spiraling and you are anxious all the time and you have all of these different thoughts about what someone's not going to do and how someone's not going to take your sister away from you, which she has her own identity but right now it's just this is my girl this is my life this is my thing and you mix that with alcohol it's gonna make for an interesting it's just gonna make for an interesting i think reveal so right now i am engulfed in this novel i am what you call like yeah i think i probably might finish it today it is i'm trying to see how much percentage i've gotten so yeah i'm at 58 percent. so i'll probably finish it today that's probably like another two hours two and a half hours of reading um i'm about to get to judith's uh perspective in just just a moment i think i have just about like 25 pages left before we before we hear from judith so i'm really excited to um to hear from her so yeah i'm so upset that i deleted that 
deleted that clip that I shot the night before last because it was very good in detail as to like why I didn't want to read either or anymore uh, in the moment. And I also feel like I need to, that's a book I need to start over. Also, I can't do like I did with Rules of Civility and just jump back into it. I can, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna have to just like completely start that over. And I'm just not at that space anymore. I'm not on the bandwagon anymore. I'm not on the idiot train anymore. So maybe news of the release of the third installment might prompt me to go back and maybe read the first two, like together. But right now, she's on the back burner. And so, yeah, since Cassandra at the wedding is about to be finished y'all also know because i've shown you that i'm reading blue pastures which is a collection of writings um they're not even short stories they are writings and musings by mary oliver on just what she thinks about literature writing about her writing process and the things that she does when she's thinking and writing and her musings on nature and things like that so and they're really really short so i'm just reading a couple of those every day but i wanted to go ahead and start on medicine walk by richard wagamese uh i'm excited about this i'm really excited about this um he's a canadian first of all he's native american definitely and he's um from canada he's a canadian uh writer and he writes a lot about the Native American experience and I'm I'm excited about this. Richard Wagamese first came on my radar when I was um, when I watched one of Claire Reed's uh, reviews on on Medicine Walk and so I just came across it in a secondhand bookstore and I bought it and I'm and he came to my mind like, I had already thought about reading this but when I was just at that other bookstore you guys just saw me um I also picked up another book of his called horse something I forgot but I was like I got medicine walk and I think I want to read medicine walk so it says here it's about when a 16 year old Franklin Starlight is summoned by his ailing father Eldon Frank Eldon Franklin's sense of duty clashes with the deep resentment he feels for his father's many years of absence, neglect, and drinking. Still, he agrees to his father's final wish to be buried in the warrior way, deep in the rugged backcountry of British Columbia. The two men set out together on one last journey as Eldon offers his son an inheritance Franklin never could have imagined, slowly revealing his life's hardships, joys, and sustaining hopes. That sounds good. And and this probably could like itch my Lonesome Dove uh, scratch because I really want to read Lonesome Dove. And I know that's more like of a Western. When I think about cowboys, I think about Native Americans as well because you know, just like the, the, the typical connection that you have between those two and how they are placed in movies. Now, I'm willing to have my mindset switched over but that's what I think about when I think about Native Americans. I think about cowboys as well. So I really want to read Lonesome Dove. I have not ordered it yet. So I think this could just like basically itch that scratch. You know, I'm just looking for something meaningful and deep and a duo, father-son duo um, on a way to bury his dad just seems like the perfect thing to give me what I want right now. So I'm gonna start this today. I'm excited about this one, y'all. I am very much excited about this. I don't know why, I'm just excited. I wanna feel something. And I don't wanna feel, I don't necessarily want it to be like hurt. I don't wanna feel like struck to the core. Um, I don't wanna go down to the deep depths of my soul that is a, a little life, but I do wanna still very much feel something. And so I'm hoping that that's what this book does for me. So right now, I'm actually headed. I'm actually headed um, to. Um, <laughs> I'm watering Ajima uh, commenting on my video. I'm so excited. <laughs> you guys don't know how much I love her. I am obsessed with Yenna. Yenna over at A Modern Ajima. I'm just obsessed obsessed with her I love the way that she talks about books her voice and all of her choices I've read a few books based on the fact that she read them 
I look forward to her wrap ups. I just love her so much. And you guys should subscribe to her channel if you have not already. She's amazing. But I just got a notification that she commented. I'm just excited about that. So anyway, yeah, I'm about to head for some breakfast. I am so hungry and starving and I decided to get my ass out the house. It is New Year's Eve, by the way. Happy New Year. Because y'all know this book is going to um, go. I mean, this vlog is going to go up. My feet are cold. And I have on mushy socks. Um, y'all know this vlog is going to go up after the New Year. So I just wanted to just say, you know, Happy New Year to you. Um, 2024 is going to be amazing. I don't have any like New Year's resolutions or um, yeah, I don't have any of that. You know what I mean? I don't have any of that. I'm just going into the new year with a positive attitude and a renewed sense of purpose, as I always say, and I'm hoping for the best. And I know that with the best, com the best comes from what you put in. So what you give is what you're going to get. So yeah, breakfast it is for me. Um, I'm gonna do some brekkie and I'm gonna do some reading and I'll come in with the latest on Cassandra after I get to a, another like climactic point. Deuces. y'all right, it's me just checking in here I uh, just made it home from doing a little bit of reading abroad meaning reading outside of my apartment um, also I picked my daughter up from her friend's house and she now is going to her dad's house so I'll be bringing in the new year alone which is honestly fine I'm fine with it solitude is my safe place so yeah so I finished um I finished uh Cassandra at the wedding I'm still letting my thoughts permeate so I think I'll be able to talk about it at length tomorrow um a little bit more a little bit better but I really like that book a lot <sighs> we're going to because I don't know what to, because I don't have all my thoughts together yet it's safe to say that 
Cassandra at the wedding is going with me into 2024 because I just finished it today. Tomorrow is the first of the year. It's gonna technically be one, it's gonna technically be a 2024 read, even though I finished it on the last day of January, I mean of December. So anyway, and I started Medicine Walk by Richard Wagamese. This is awesome. I'm only on chapter four. And I have, I have dog ear, one, two, three, four pages. <laughs> it's good, it's good. I'm gonna just leave it alone for right now. I'm gonna get a little bit farther in. But let's just say, Richard Wagamese is a master already at atmosphere, atmospheric writing. And luckily for me, this is winter time. So this is gonna be a winter read. Um, and it's honestly, it's giving cowboy like I thought it would. It's good. So it's just very smooth. It's very atmospheric. It's very, it's a lot of imagery. So moving on. Then I got some book mail. So I placed the order. I think I told you earlier in the vlog. Too many people love this book and already from my girl Kenya over at uh, Lily Reads. She is the first person that I heard talk about this book. So I would say she's the reason why I uh, ordered it. But I very recently watched one of um, one of the wrap ups that I didn't get to from um, a modern Ajuma and she also read it and liked it. So I'm excited to say that I have The Rachel Incident by, what is her name? Who's the author, who's the author? Carolyn O'Donohue. Oh, what a pretty woman. So yes, I'm excited. I'm excited. So we have, yeah, so we have The Rachel. This is a really nice cover. And it's a hardback, oh my goodness. And I have another book also that I wanna show you guys. Hold on, let me change my battery. Let's read what this is about. Rachel is a student, Rachel is a student working at a bookstore when she meets James and it's love at first sight. Effervescent and insistently heterosexual, James soon invites Rachel to be his roommate. And the two begin a friendship that changes the course of both their lives forever. Together they run riot through the streets of Cork City, trying to maintain a bohemian existence while the threat of the financial crash looms before them. When Rachel falls in love with her married professor, Dr. Fred Bryan, James helps her, <laughs> James helps her devise a reading at their local bookstore when the hope that she might seduce him, with the hope that she might seduce him afterwards. But Fred has other desires, ooh. Ooh. <laughs> so, so begins a series of secrets and compromises that intertwine the fates of James, Rachel, Fred, and Fred's glamorous, well-connected, bourgeois wife. Um, aching with unrequited love, shot through the delicious, sparkling humor, the Rachel incident is a triumph. So I'm excited. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm excited about the Rachel incident. It's a pretty book. I won't, I won't be reading it just yet, but I just had to go ahead and get it before I forgot. And then we have the um, Bright Young Woman. This is actually different for me. I actually read Luckiest Girl Alive when it first came out. I think it came out like 2013, 2014. I read that book and I love that book. It was very engulfing at the time. So we have here, yeah, Bright Young Woman. I think it's like, it's not a murder mystery because it's already about a serial killer, but it's still a mystery nonetheless. So let's go ahead and read it. January 15, 1978 is a night of promise. A serial killer's escape in Aspen, Colorado couldn't be further from the minds of the busy young women at the top sorority on Florida State University's campus in Tallahassee. Sorority president Pamela Shoemaker spends her Saturday night glued to her desk, cradling her textbook like a pillow. Startling awake at 3 a.m. by a strange sound, she makes the fateful decision to investigate. 
What she finds outside her bedroom door is a scene of implausible violence. Two of her sisters dead, the two, the two others maimed. It is the final murderous spree of the man the papers will soon dub the all-American sex killer. But Pamela doesn't know this yet, nor does she know the story of 25-year-old Ruth Wachowski who four years earlier disappeared from Seattle's Lake from Seattle's Lake Sammamish State Park in, bar, in broad daylight, confounding police and shattering Ruth's roommate, the best friend, Tina Cannon. When the massacre at the Tallahassee sorority house becomes national news, Tina is certain it is the work of the same man who terrorized the Seattle area four years prior. She rushes to Florida on a collision course with Pamela in one last impending tragedy. Uh-oh. Bright Young Woman is the story of two women who demanded answers to questions nobody else would ask. What happened to Ruth the day she went missing? And how did a serial killer from the Pacific Northwest set his sights on the sorority house in Florida? Toggling between those nightmarish days in 1978 and a letter that brings Pamela and Tina together in the present. The astonishing truth is revealed along with the portrait of the extraordinary woman who saw past the media's glorification of the Kennedy killers for who he really was. Yeah. So these are two of more books to come. So what I'm about to do is know what I'm gonna do but I do know I'm in for the night I'm probably gonna read some more medicine walk as it is just this amazing book like girl it's shaping up to be a favorite I can already tell I can already tell and I was talking about hold on I was in a car with you guys and I couldn't remember the name of it from earlier but remember I said when I saw Richard Wagamese at the bookstore, I was like, I already had Medicine Walk, but I went on ahead and grabbed it. This is called Indian Horse. And I like that they're like matching. Isn't that cool? Same type of book. I love that. I already read to you guys the um, synopsis of Indian Horse. But anyway, we're reading Medicine Walk right now. So. So yeah, I think I'm gonna get cozy. Probably get out of these clothes and I'm watching Pride and Prejudice right now. And I'm also, I was book shopping. I haven't bought anything just yet, but I have a full cart on Amazon full of stuff that I wanna read this year. Oh, that is really cheap. Yes, yes. I'm watching Pride and Prejudice. And yeah, I think I'm gonna just take a chill peel and um just to relax. I don't have a kid. I haven't had a kid here for the last couple of days and she's gonna be gone for another day or two. And it's just something about not having your kid at home that is freeing, but it's also like She's a part of who I am. She is a part of my identity. So it gets to being a little kind of like difficult to imagine life without her, even though she's just across town. You know what I mean? She's not far, but I miss her. We've been texting the whole time that she's been gone, but she's just living her best life, honey, on this winter break, which I can't be mad at, you know? I can't be mad at that. But it's still just like, what about your mom? What about me? <laughs> Shoot, what about me? I feel like Effie. Um, all right, y'all. I'm just rambling on. I'm gonna watch some, read some Richard Wagamese, watch some, watch some Pride and Prejudice and catch up on some of my uh, YouTube pals. And I'll talk to you guys in the morning a little bit more about um, Cassandra at the wedding after I get my thoughts together. So yeah, bye.
Hey everybody, coming in for another day here for the reading vlog. Today is actually January the 1st, 2024. Happy New Year! Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to everyone. I just light up when I'm about to talk about some books, you know? So I'm coming to you guys um, with news that I have finished Cassandra at the Wedding. So with Cassandra at the Wedding, um actually technically i finished it last year because i finished it yesterday but like i said last night i wanted to talk about it today so that so in in getting my thoughts together letting everything permeate um last night kind of helped me get put the book into perspective and like talk about um my thoughts about the book and everything like that and how i feel about the book so uh, to sum it up to wrap it up um i really enjoyed the detail so everything about this book is sort of um symbolistic so there's so many symbols to name here that's how closely woven uh, Dorothy Baker um, weave the story together that's how close and intricate I think she was to the um, character of Cassandra um, so lot, lots of what's happening seems like it's very unimportant meaning when you open up the book you hear Cassandra talking about how she told them she could be there on the 21st or the 22nd or whatever the case may be it just seems like very monotonous sort of um slice of life of what she has going on in the next couple of days it just really seems like she's just giving you a list run of the meal of what she plans to do um in the next coming days or whatever and you find out it's because of her sister's wedding the, ma the main focus or the main work that's going on in this story is um, two women moving into their own lives. And so that's what we're getting. The portrait of a lady, the portrait of a 24 year old grown woman having to divide off, divide herself or split her identity from a we as into two twin sisters, t twin sisters into a her and a me into separate entities. And so that's magnified in this story and i really enjoyed how cassandra at the wedding was written um she's definitely afraid to be by herself she's afraid to be alone and that's where you get all of the these monologues sort of these um her conjuring up ideas on how she's supposed to present to judith how she needs to leave this man like are you you cannot be serious you about to get married I'm like are you joking you're about to mess up what you and i have together for a guy really also what you understand here is that they are all still very much grieving the loss of their mother jane jane is mentioned so much um uh, she's she's spoken of as mom or they call her by her name jane they talk about how how close jane was with their father and how she was sort of like not the man in the relationship but just like how a man would come into your life and expose you to new things new offerings new givings um the mom would be like that towards their father you know she would introduce him to certain things like they mentioned hermes scarves and i don't know ralph lauren belts or some other brand of belts and how those were the sorts of things that jane was into and so she would kind of incorporate that into her marriage and when she would be off on one of her trips you know talking about her plays or her books she would bring dad back gifts and he would be so delighted and happy really to see her but the gifts really made him feel like she was really thinking about him while she was gone and so they speak on that and how judith wanted to you know get married in their mom's study so that they can feel a sense that she is also with them so it's 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 out there but it's not and also it's the alcoholism that is taking over their father he's definitely drinking to cope with the loss of jane and the fact that he retired early that's also like there's emphasis drawing on the fact that he's retired he's a retired philosophy professor but he definitely retired too young all of those things are 
in the story on purpose they're there to make you understand they're there to make you like sense that there's something deeper going on with these characters once again detail 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 Cassandra at the wedding is a master narrative about detail and Dorothy did a good job with that uh Cassandra also has this sort of self-deprecating humor because she desires to be an author but she doesn't a writer sorry she desires to be a writer but she's not she doesn't think that she's good enough especially because the the matriarch of the family the mother sort of had a, a well-rounded career in being an author and so it's just like I, I don't know if I could like ever live up to you know my mom's expectation on what it is to actually be a writer and so she definitely made jokes and stuff about that on herself a lot other thing judah's story is cassandra's story cassandra's story is is judah's story they are intertwined they are connected so everything that cassandra is talking about in the first part of the novel that's judith as well and everything that judith is talking about in the second part of the novel that's cassandra speaking all the experiences that they're dealing with and going through throughout the story it's both of them going through it just in different ways but they're both experiencing it and that's also um just a just another part of the just another part of the story that I just like really hone in on and I took as like something that I was supposed to like pay attention to I guess or or um or look at this story is incredibly immersive very much so there was such a funny moment when um Cassandra was trying to tell Judith like uh, the plan on how she was going to break it to Jack that she wasn't going to marry him and then Judith kind of snaps out of it and says something or not snaps out of it but I don't know where I got this part from but Cassandra and I quote says girl <laughs> she literally said girl you do talk like granny <laughs> and it's like so in the now you know that's something that's so in the that's something that we would say here in 2024 that's something that I would say to my mother or my daughter or my sister like girl you do talk like granny and I just thought that that was very funny um and that's a few quotes um that stuck out to me I really enjoyed uh Judith's voice so when we're when you're reading the story and getting Cassandra's point of view you have the idea that this is a girl about town this girl is funny she's very smart charismatic you almost get a sense of narcissism from her like she thinks that she is um to be admired not admired by her sister but of course like they're just interconnected so she feels like her place in her sister's life is the most important above anybody else because they're twins um and she's not really trying to separate herself like judith is but when judith starts speaking or also let's still stay on cassandra cassandra is very much in the she's how do i put it she's she's in crisis mode she's in crisis mode and she decides to do some things that are just not proper that are not right she's very um um nervous she's just really nervous about what's going on right now and that's what her voice sounds like everything is so much like in a hurry in a rush and but when we get to judith judith is kind of she's um meek and mild and she thinks about things before she does them and she lets ideas permeate before she actually makes a move on them she's very calculated in everything that she does so the sister they're quite different they're quite different girls to be honest to be identical they are identical which identical means they have the same dna but internally mentally they are so much different from each other and you learn that when when judith starts to speak and i really enjoyed her i really enjoyed judith's mindset and mental process on things and how she felt like when it was time for her to marry when she fell in love with jack she knew that cassandra's place in her life would alter not in the sense that she would love her less but the love of a husband and wife was completely different from the love of a sibling and she talks about that she goes further into detail about what she means by that when you read the novel this book is awesome like this this book is really good it's very relevant it's very relevant to today to talk to the times of today um 
Yeah, here it goes. I wrote, Judith is straightforward and secure and clear about the life that's changing before her eyes, whereas Cassandra is scattered. She has a scattered voice. So that's what I wrote down. And, um, and yeah. And also, one thing that Cassandra says is we should have been one person all along, not two. So, yeah, that's my thoughts on on Cassandra at the wedding. I adored it. I really did. I enjoyed it immensely. And I hope that you guys pick it up because it is definitely, I think, an essential it's an essential read so let's go now into the beauty that is medicine walk already look at the tabs this is all my reading from last night um i started it last night and i got to page 87 um that's about chapter 13 what chapter is this let's see Uh, chapter 10 oh chapter 10 let me tell you something <laughs> this novel has one of the best depictions of bug fever i've ever could I, I ever could imagine in my life and the only reason the only reason why i knew what wagamese was describing is because i was scrolling on tiktok one day and i came across this guy and hopefully i can add it on the screen for you and i'm going to show you exactly what book fever looks like i'm going to show i'm going to put it right here and then we can talk about it So, bug fever is when you saw, you'll see that it's when, um, I wrote it down, hold on, because I want to get it right, I want to get it right. So, I wrote it here in the book, and I knew it, I knew it was coming, I knew it was coming, so... So it's the greatest detail leading up. I put that this is the greatest detail leading up to Franklin shooting his first book and having book fever after. 
because he cries. Bug fever is respect for the animal you harvested. And so it's an immense amount of gratitude and also pain that you have because just going deeper into it, you know, apparent some some people believe that animals certain specific types of animals are here for us to feed off of it's biblical you know and so hold on y'all hey y'all so it's a little bit later on um from when i was talking about richard wagamese's medicine walk and the book fever um the portion about Franklin getting bug fever from harvesting his first book and I'm home I just got off of reading off of live if you're interested in reading on live with me or like doing like a sort of like collab with doing reading sprints live but except mine's is more vibes I don't like the pressure of like having a timer going so I just begin this the live with we're gonna read for an hour and when the hour is up we're gonna end it and I play all of my different types of music that I like to listen to I have an epidemic epidemic sound subscription so I'm gonna be playing music from Epidemic Sound while we Epidemic Sound while we read. Um, so yeah, I just got finished with that, and I got through another huge chunk. I only have this much left, and I'm say I'm I'm scared. I don't want it to be over. It's pretty short. Um, it's two hundred. Last page. 245 246 pages so and i'm on page 117 so it's going really good um i just really wanted to come in and wrap up the vlog uh, we got through one novel in this vlog which is typically my pace i don't like to like rush things so yeah i just that's it I'm really loving it. Shouts out to everyone subscribed to my channel. I hit 100. I mean, I hit 500 subscribers today and I'm really excited. I'm really happy. Um, and I'm just here to like keep it going. And this is the joy that this is the, the main thing that brings me joy. So, yeah, I'm going to edit this vlog on this good, good first of the year. And it'll be going up on the 3rd on Wednesday at 10 a.m. So look look forward to that. And whilst I'm doing that, I'm going to be, I'll probably be done with Medicine Walk by the end of the day tomorrow. And then I'm going to start working on what's going to be my first sit down review um, of a book. It's going to be my first one. And I'm going to do it on, on Medicine Walk because that's how much this book has really moved me. And yeah, I'm really excited. I'm really like, I'm really chilled out one because I'm tired from my workout. It took a lot out of me today. But um, two, I'm just really overjoyed. Honestly, I'm just really happy. So I'm just in a good place. Uh, really in a good place a good space and yeah that's it so thank you guys so much for watching um subscribe to the channel let's be friends like i thought like i said let's be friends let's talk about books and i'll see you guys in the next reading vlog if not the next reading vlog i'll see you in the next review uh short whatever the case may be i will see you later okay Thanks so much for being here. You are all loved. You are all worthy. And let's be happy in 2024. Deuces.